So <laughs> go ahead and click, David. Thank you. So this, whoops. So this, um, this program is something we've never done before, which is it's really, it's really going to be about you guys. We're hoping that um, lots of people will unmute themselves and share your memories. Um, many people I know on the on the uh, program tonight are very early residents from 81, 82, 83, et cetera. Uh, others are, are perhaps later residents. I moved to Highlands Ranch in, in 2000. Um, so it doesn't matter when you move to Highlands Ranch or even if you don't live in Highlands Ranch. We'd, we'd like to hear your memories if you have any of it. Um, some people we've been hearing from uh, like live close by and would drive through on Daniels Park to Daniels uh, Colorado Boulevard. Park Road to go up to, to Daniels Park. So all different kind of memories that people have. So it's just going to be, um, I think, really interesting as we get personal memories and hear some of the personal stories. If you do speak up, you know, obviously don't, uh, you know, go into a great deal of detail, but uh, would like to hear just kind of a short synopsis of what it is that you have to say. And as, as DJ mentioned, we are recording it. So there, we might even in fact need to get or want to get back in touch with you. And hopefully you would say yes. And uh, we could expand upon some of your memories. So uh, what my plan is here tonight, our plan is we're just gonna have very few pictures, very few uh, pictures on the slide program here, mainly just to kind of maybe jog some memories um, and, and you know, so if you see something that you go, oh, I remember that, please speak up and feel free to speak up at any time. You don't have to wait until it's any special time. Um, you'll speak up by unmuting yourself and maybe say hello or, you know, something to, to let us know that you're there. Um, so again, we, we certainly encourage that. And that's what's going to make this more special than ever. So just to start out here, we have... Uh, a picture uh, taken in taken in an airplane when uh, Mission Viejo had first. I think they were still probably in their option period, and they um, chartered an aircraft and wanted to go up and you know kind of survey the land. And so this was what Highlands Ranch looked like in 1978. Basically, that's the mansion, and there's not too much more than that. You can see a few little buildings or whatever here and there some gullies and, and maybe a tree here and there, but basically it was empty. And I think, I'm hoping that we hear from some of you um, who are gonna be telling us about Highlands Ranch before it was you know, the new community uh, built by Mission Viejo. So before I go any farther, are, is anybody on the call who was here in those days and, and wants to tell us how it was before, before it was starting to be developed? Uh, can I pipe in? Yes, Norm. Well, I, I've been down in the area since the 1960s, and I lived over across the river in Jefferson County. But I do remember, and it's been bothering me for years, that when you ended up at the end of Broadway, where the road starts going into the mansion, there was a big, huge wrought iron uh, sign it was, I think it said Phipps Ranch or something like that on it. Mm -hmm. I've always wondered what happened to that sign. I wonder if anybody knows. Does anybody know? I, I don't know. I know we've got a picture of the Phipps sign, um, but I, I do not know. Does anybody have any clue? Wouldn't it be yeah. nice if it was in somebody's garage somewhere and we could revive it? <laughs> You know, Perhaps we should ask um, Jim Teffer. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. And you know, there are still some of the Phipps um, children or grandchildren around. So maybe they would have it in their garage somewhere. Maybe we should ask them that. Thanks, Norm. Um, Sarah, are you taking notes? Or will you take notes? Thank you. So everybody knows Sarah. Yeah, well. Sarah. Sarah, make yourself unmuted. Sarah um, and I have been 
working tirelessly on this project. And Sarah has been making 100 million phone calls. So I, I appreciate that. And I know a lot of you are on tonight because Sarah probably contacted you. So um, I think between Sarah and I, we can kind of add to our notes here and maybe do some follow-up. So thank you, Norm. Any chance the Eggster um, family is, is on the call? We got some, uh, we did get a, an email or two from a family named two people, I think Susan and Holly. And they, I'm gonna read to you what they said um, when they knew about this program. They said, how exciting. Uh, my family has resided in Heritage Greens on the South Suburban Golf Course for 41 years. She said, they used to go rabbit and squirrel hunting in Highlands Ranch when it was field and farm. And then she talks about the dump which is now Lorenzo Park. She said, it used to smell when the breeze came from the south. Sounds lovely. County Line Road was a roller coaster and with a few lips and bumps between Quebec and University with the best area between Holly and Colorado. She also remembers, she said, you could drive straight down Colorado Boulevard, a dirt road to Daniels Park which was a great place to hang out and party in high school. Um, then she also talks, and maybe other people have heard of this. She said back then, Park Meadows was a llama farm and Rock Canyon High School area was an emu farm and cows and pronghorn roamed all over. Yes, the bison were always there and easier to get up close and personal how things have changed. Does, any, does that sound familiar to anybody? Does anybody remember the ostrich farm and the emu farm? And the llamas, apparently on an yes. earlier email, it was emus and ostriches. So who said yes? Karen. Karen Aunt Karen, so tell yes. us about it. I remember um, we used to have the Highlands Ranch days and they used to bring the llamas to Northridge Park. And they were part of the um, celebrations we had. I think it was maybe the 4th of July. There were also was a farm that you could go and get vegetables and um, eggs and things um, right there on Quebec, right near the emu and the uh, ostrich farm. So that, that was fun because it was wide, it was just wide open spaces then. Neat. You know, I actually tried to do a little bit of research and see if I could find anything about ostriches and emus, like in old newspapers. And gosh, back then, I think ostriches and emus were very popular animals. They there were. Was a lot, were they? Yeah, there was a lot of things, but it was all about fashion, about the ostrich plumes, you know, for the hats and, and things like that. And I couldn't, and maybe I just didn't hunt, hunt. there was like two or 300 entries. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't get through all two or 300 of them. But uh, I, I thought that was fabulous. I had never heard of that before. Good, thank you, Karen. All right, all right, let's go on. Anybody else, any, any um, comments on antelopes or ostriches or, or any of that kind of stuff? I would like to comment if I can on County Line Road. Uh, that was, my kids were oh, probably six, seven years old in that time frame. And we want, and if they wanted to have fun, we'd take them up on county line and take that county line roller coaster as fast as I could drive it and keep control. But the <laughs> kids just loved it. <laughs> Hopefully you had seat belts back then, Norm. My dad's seat belt was an arm flung across to hold us kids in. <laughs> I right. felt like we were flying most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We, good, we good. did that Thank too you. when I was a kid. And when I was a kid, no, we actually had the uh, station wagon with the back seat laid down. So no seat belts there, just laying in the back seat as we went flying up and down. So you went up and down County Line too, DJ? Oh, yes. That was definitely a thing using County Line as a roller coaster. <laughs> Neat. I actually saw a picture. I think it was a, J, a, a Getty picture. So I didn't want to take it because I figured I'd go to jail for life if I used it, but it was a, it was a neat picture about County Line Road. And uh, we've heard a lot about the pronghorn. Any uh, special memories about pronghorn? Well. Yes? 
and um, Northridge Elementary was the only school here uh, built by Mission Viejo and then done with a lease buyback to the school district so that the kids in quote, your hometown of Highlands Ranch could go to school. And they chose the pronghorn as their mascot. Oh, I didn't and know that. They were all over, all over any place that didn't have a house. They were like bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> they were everywhere. We used to feel kind of sad when we'd see a shopping center like University in Colorado there when all of that started to be built and we knew that they were gonna go find somewhere else to live. I know and it's sad. Yeah, it is. Cause you don't, you don't, I, I haven't seen any around. Paul said that he saw some a few months ago behind um, Cabela's over at I-25 and, and Ridgegate Parkway. And apparently um, according to, what's his name? Larry Perkins the man who did the sculpture of the pronghorn in front of Westridge um, uh, Rec Center. Um, Larry says that there, there, apparently there's a herd that is back there by the, by the Cabela's in, in those hills back there. And they're kind of isolated because they can't get over I-25. They, they don't jump fences. Um, so apparently that's one of the last remaining herds out here. In those very early days, Broadway, the dead end of Broadway was at South Park Road. Um, when we just where the entrance to the groves um, is or was at that time, the only entrance. And Longhorn <laughs> right at that dead end all the time. And as was mentioned um, by Karen and Kim, um, at Northridge Elementary, our kids used to feed them from their lunches. Wow. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that, Michael. No wonder my kids came home hungry. Yeah, we were really a favorite, you know, and then they'd come, <laughs> come home. Yes, they fed their lunches to the pronghorn. There's still deer that go through. Okay, so Highlands Ranch Parkway. And my old house that my daughter owns now that faces directly west there off of, um, up by Winterbrook. I don't know if you all know the streets and um, everything, but there's a deer, there's a group of deer that come through from, I wanna say Castle Pines Village even, and they make their way through and they will jump um, Highlands Ranch Parkway and follow the park or the path <clears throat> straight down that way. And sometimes they come back too late in the morning and there'll be um, cars just stopped everywhere watching them and stuff like that. Well, now I told Jenny, the, you know, 20 some odd years that we lived in that house, deer never cro came across into our yard, but they are now. They're coming across, they're jumping that little split rail fence and coming in and I'll walk, I'll go visit her and she'll say, look at the yard, mom. And there'll be eight or 10 deer in her yard eating well, that's, plants <laughs> that's kind of, yeah but you know i think that's kind of neat because i hardly ever see them in highlands ranch anymore so i'm glad to hear that there's kind of like a little herd maybe maybe it doesn't bother me because they're not eating my plants but, but nancy, it's good to hear <laughs> nancy yes in, um, around 1998 when we were driving past the field where the Safeway Shopping Center is now on Broadway and Highlands Ranch Parkway, my husband David and I burst into the song, Home on the Range. Antelopes were playing in the field there. Prior to that, we had seen buffalo near Daniels Park mm -hmm. and deer down the street from our home where Gateway ended at that time. And early one morning, Soon after we had moved into our new home, we saw these huge animals gliding over the mansion pasture fences. We thought they were moose because we'd never seen elk before. Mm -hmm. But all these animals, so our song was Home on the Range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or what's the other one where the deer, is that Home on the Range? What's the one where the deer and the antelope play? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice call, Jean. Say that again. 
Nice going, Gene Hawtrey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, David, DJ, let's go to the next one. And so this was just to, yeah, I, I, I use this one a lot because I think just think it's so cute with the, with the antelope there in it. So how many of you guys on the call today were, were these very early people during the grand opening with the homes like in the Groves or, or um, uh, Stony Point and what was the other one? Now I'm Bayfield. 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 Stony Point. Yeah. Stony yeah. Point, when, I, when we moved in, it was just starting to be developed. And that was in 83 latter part of 83. So Stony Point Point didn't open up quite as early as Bayfield in the Grove. No. Mm -mm. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. did it? Yeah, there was like a street or two in all three of those areas. Right. So okay. the Groves had a few streets, Bayfield had a few streets. And then, um, matter of fact, I live, Scott's on here somewhere. We used to live right next door to each other. And uh, then Stony Point had a few streets. Yeah. So those were the, 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 the three original uh, subdivisions. Mm -hmm. Okay, no good, good. No school. Say that again? No rec center and no school. No, no. And no, connect, no connection to, broad, to a county line, except no. through Wilmore. Mm -hmm. Wilmore Nursery, that was where the trailers all were. <laughs> the police, oh, center, the post office. Mercy, hospitals, little clinic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rec center what rec center well that's where the office was uh. <laughs> building one built yet well so i'm confused then when you say no how, how did you how, i thought broadway went all the way up from the no. very beginning it didn't no you went so it was how did, Wilmore, wasn't it scott yeah hey right where wilmore is you took a left instead of turning into Wilmore. You took a left and came across the field to uh, Dad Clark. Yeah. Dad Clark, Dad Clark went basically up the same Creek Elementary, mm -hmm. about that far. And Broadway went just past the uh, South, was it South Ridge or South? What's South, Park. South Park. South Park. Park Road. That's oh. how you got to the groves. And that's as far as it was. Yep. Oh. I've never heard that before. Okay, good, good. Thanks. See, we're learning all kinds of neat things. All right. Anybody want to comment on your homes, have, or the model homes? In fact, I'd love to know, you know, I'm a realtor, so I have to know where model homes are. So I know that the initial model homes were on uh, Prairie Ridge, right? No, no. Jackrabbit. Uh, Jackrabbit. Now, now, were there any homes, any models on Prairie Ridge or was it just on Jackrabbit? Just Jackrabbit, just the five so, models. So was Jackrabbit the model homes for all three subdivisions then? No, no just the Bayfield. Just the uh, Bayfield. Coyote Creek had the groves. Right. It was not, not Coyote Creek, the other one. This is right off of Coyote Creek. It was a little cul-de-sac right for you. And uh, I thought, yeah, I thought it was Coyote. Rouse Place or something like that. Was it? I was. No, I thought you were right to begin with. Yeah. Get back to Broadway. That's right. There. Hi, everybody. You're basically, when you're sitting in the North Ridge Rec Center parking lot, the main parking lot, you, uh, you're you looking at the models on the back side. Mm -hmm. Three okay. Of okay. I'm going to have to go and sit there and then yeah. go around and see where the car Stony Point was. was on, Stony Point was on the second cul-de-sac. When you okay. take off, turn right off of Northridge on Old Stone, it's the second cul-de-sac to the right. Okay. That's where they were. And Nancy. They had a big part. We had a big party with the uh, traveling bus and everything for the yeah. communities. Whoever was here, company for the grand openings. They opened them all three at the same time. Okay, good. Thank you. Now, who, who else was speaking up? Nancy, uh, I was. I'm Sandy White. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, we bought one of the um, model homes on Jackrabbit Place in 1987. And the first homes that were, <clears throat> were built actually in the Highlands Ranch, I think, 
were those five model homes and the office on Jackrabbit Place. So we, we came in after they were finished with this subdivision. Uh, we moved in in 1987 after they were no longer using it as a model home. And it's right across the street from Northridge and the rec center. And we, we have some stories about wildlife coming up from the park that are kind of cute. Um, one of them, we had a deer walk up from the park. Our neighbor watched it. We were both working at, at the time, my husband and I. And uh, they watched him uh, go up into our yard. We didn't have fences then. We just, you know, all the homes were just one right after the other. Uh, no fences. And he started nibbling on a, all of the flowers and things in our flower box and, and left just as quickly as he came up. And another time we had a family of uh, skunks walk up the street from the park. It was really cute. The uh, mom had like four babies walking after her and they came up and visited us for a while with no terrible repercussions. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Are you still in Highlands Ranch, Sandy? Yes, still live there for 34 years. Mm -hmm. Wow, so you're still on Jackrabbit. Yes. Wow, neat. So I guess that means you like it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> our realtor, uh, I remember we moved here from the East Coast and our realtor recommended this location. They said, you won't be sorry because it's so centrally located. And he was right. We've Really loved it. Very good. That's neat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Shall we move on? DJ? So the, I just thought I'd throw this in because, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think it, I think Highlands Ranch at the time um, sparked a lot of negative feelings among people in Denver? Um, were any of you, you know, party to that? Were you involved in that? Did you hear that? Did you agree with it? Any, any comments on that? I guess not. Um, they wanted to have Elitches in Highlands Ranch and they had a bus that took us all down to Elitches downtown to see if we would approve them relocating to Highlands Ranch. And I think the area is where Windcrest is now that they were going to put that. And I could be wrong about the location, but um, that was quite negative and the residents were up in arms over that whole thing. Yeah, that's right about, uh, that's right about Eluches being where Windcrest is now. Right, that's and what Johnny, I thought. Johnny Bowen who owned the property didn't want Eulich's in there. And that was one of the reasons that he consented to uh, Erickson to buy in, uh, buy in that property when he sold it. Norm, what do you mean? He, he didn't want Eulich's, but he, as long as it was gonna stay as a residential, then he was willing to sell it? Well, he, he didn't want it that commercialized, you know, like Eulich's is. Mm -hmm. So when Erickson came along and made the offer, it kind of fit in with, him doing what he wanted with the old ranch, with the old Fly B ranch. So it just. So, sorry, go ahead. But uh, it, a big factor that I'm trying to point out, I'm trying to make is that Johnny Bowen was very much against Elitch's coming in here. So what year was the, I know I've heard of the Elitch's. What, what year was that? Well, about Johnny Bowen sold it to uh, Wincrest in 2005. I mm -hmm, yeah, somewhere around there. Two, four, two. So it was obviously before that. He was back in the 80s. Yeah, Late. Way before it was, the yeah, it was, it was controversy. Was, uh, but I have to say that the best thing was the mission yeah. people always went to the people and asked what they thought. Yeah. Of things. And they made a point of listening to what we had to say and then working on it. But Elitch is, um, just like Karen and Ann said, was not a, a positive thing at the time. 
Okay, good. You know, we I don't think we've ever or DJ, did you say anything about that one during your portion? I, yeah, I, well, we talked about eliches in that presentation. It wasn't okay. exactly where Windcrest is. It's actually where the lower part of the golf course is, right on the other side of the Highland Canal is where they were planning on putting it. That's what that's where it actually got zoned on all the zoning documents. But it's literally just across the Highline Canal from where Windcrest is right now, <laughs> just to the south. Neat. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's. I, well, I, I. And I also just my little comment on this. Uh, one day I was at um, Chatfield State Park, and had stopped there at the overlook when you're over when you're overlooking where the water is you know, the reservoir and then the dam in the background. And it was just a pretty day. And then some lady um, came up on her bicycle and she parked right, you know, she came up right next to me. And of course we started talking and before you know it, we're just chattering away. And she was, um, uh, uh, in fact, she was, she was fascinating. She was telling me all about her mother who in, I guess at the very beginning when um, uh, Mission Viejo came in, her mother was, was uh, I guess, trying to fight them on all kinds of things. And um, Jim Teffer knew and asked him about her. And he says, oh, yes, I remember that. So it was just, it was funny because you can be somewhere totally far away, like out at Chatfield. And now all of a sudden we're, we're back to Highlands Ranch and, and things that had happened. Um, what was her name? Mally, Mrs. O'Malley. So I had asked Jim about Mrs. O'Malley. I said, have you, have you ever heard of a Mrs. O'Malley? And he said, yes. And, and he went on to say, you know, how she was just very unhappy with some of the things that they were gonna do. I think, I think that's when they were gonna tear down or were thinking about uh, tearing down the cheese ranch. Uh, anyway, and he ended up, uh, Mission Viejo ended up making a big contribution to some historical fund to, you know, to help help ease some of the pain of, of some of their uh, some of their building plans. So you meet people all over the place that, that talk about Highlands Ranch. All right, DJ, next please. Um, and then finally, this was then a little bit later and I don't know what these dates are, but now all of a sudden things are better. A great moment in history and Douglas okays the project. So we know that, that uh, Jim Taffer and company uh, all of them um, had a lot of work to do with the county and with the governor and, and just on, on so many different fronts. And they finally won, obviously, and were able to get approval for the, for the community. So it started out as a real negative, but it, they got a permission and look at how wonderful it is today. Yep, I see 1979 on one of those newspaper pages. You can see that, huh? Yep, in the upper right. Oh my gosh, that, that's when, that's why it's good you've got young eyes. Oh yeah, I see that. Okay, next. Oh, so let's go to this now. Um, uh, I, I hope everybody knows what this is. This is the very first house that was sold. And this was back in 1981 in September. Um, and Sarah, can you just tell us a little bit more? Sarah, you have to unmute. This is where I'm going to do the introduction? Yes, please. That is okay. Participating in the Highlands Ranch 40th anniversary celebration, the Highlands Ranch Historical Society has placed the plaque on the first home closed on in Highlands Ranch in 1981. In this video, we will be meeting the first and second homeowners of this home. Okay, so this was the very first house. Notice there's no landscaping or anything. It's just pristine. Now, if we go to our next one, we will see all about it. Now, can you hear it? Yes, thank you. In March 2021, we presented a plaque to Jim Teffer, father of Highlands Ranch. Today, April of 2021, 
we are presenting a marker on the home, the first home closed in Highlands Ranch. We are celebrating, continuing our celebration of the 40th anniversary of Highlands Ranch. And so we're going to introduce the uh, first homeowners here, Philip and Kay Scott on the end. They were the very first people to close on a home in Highlands Ranch. And then the current homeowners of this home, uh, Judith and Paul Steiner. Philip and Kay, would you mind just saying a few words about the home and, and your purchase of it? Yes, we were a young couple. We bought it, lived in it 11 years. We had a daughter that was not quite a year old. We were really pleased to move into it. We were lucky and in the drawing got 12% interest rate, which at the time was phenomenal. And we moved out of the country into here and we're really glad we did. My wife Kay will tell you more. Uh, our daughter, was Sarah, was nine months old the day we moved in and she took her first steps because she wasn't afraid to fall on the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, we've been uh, we've uh, we bought the house from the Scots, and we are we've been here 28 years, and we originally lived in a condo. This is our first actual home, and uh, we uh, bought the house because uh, we love the view in the back, and of course, uh, at that point, uh, housing was hard to find, so so we so we uh, took it as soon as we as soon as we saw it. So uh, anyway, uh, it's it, we love we love Highlands Ranch, and we you know we hopefully continue to live here for several more years. And so I'd like to read what the plaque says. <clears throat> it says the Highlands Ranch Historical Society recognizes the first Highlands Ranch home. The date sold was September 28, 1981, and the builder was Mission Viejo. Thank you for letting us put the plaque on your home, and thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having us. That's what it looks like today. So that was Nita. The the video kind of. Um, uh, stopped a little bit, but uh, we, we we now have one official. Um, uh, it's it's not like an historic landmark, but it kind of is because we don't have any other anything else. It's officially a landmark. I mean, the mansion obviously should be, but it's not. So we thought, let's put a plaque on the on the building. So that was Phil and Kay Scott and and Paul and Judith Steiner, um, and it was on Coyote. So it sounds like. Paul, was that you saying that maybe, um, or not Paul, um, Scott, was that you saying that maybe the, the model homes were on Coyote then? No, I think they were on, they were on Grouse Place. Grouse which Place. Which is a okay. little cul-de-sac just beyond the entry to Coyote. Okay, all right. So on, on the um, south side of the rec center now. Right, correct. All right, good, good. Well, thank you. And this bill mentioned that Mortgage rates apparently at the time were like 18%, but Mission was smart and they were uh, advertising 12% or so. This flyer is actually from uh, Mission Viejo in, in Aurora, uh, that subdivision, uh, which was obviously in, uh, in full bloom when uh, uh, Highlands Ranch was started. So, and I just mm -hmm. jump in on that, Nancy, and say that <clears throat> Mission only had a uh, limited amount of that 12% money. Oh. And so they did a lottery type system um, on a, I think it was July 25th, if I remember right, in 81, people gathered at the area of the homes um, and um, Joe Blake, had like bingo balls in a, you know, a rolling thing. You had to have your lot and block number picked out in case your number was called. You had to call out what lot number, block number you wanted, and then 
go straight to um, a financing table. We were there at the same time that um, Philip and Kay were there and we're fortunate to have our number pulled. So we were able to take advantage of that financing, but you had to be ready with your exactly which um, lot you wanted and be ready to go sign uh, the papers, the financing papers, mm -hmm. preliminary papers. Congratulations, Cooks. <laughs> you were winners too. Oh. <laughs> That's neat. Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, this was just a picture then of uh, of Jack Rabbit and and uh, Prairie uh, Prairie Ridge then. Okay, moving on. So um, uh, at the same time, the same day that we did the video on the first home. We also did a video with um, some of the first residents. And um, Sarah, do you wanna uh, introduce our residents and then uh, the purgatory video? Right. In this video, some residents who were the very first families in Helen's Ranch met at the Purgatory Wine Cellar. If you haven't been there, check it out. The people there are friendly, the atmosphere is warm, and it's a great place to meet friends. We had Phil and Kay Scott, Scott and Nancy Willett, Kim Starkey, and Gary and, and Carol Danny. Next. Okay. And so here's, this is just a, I, <laughs> not a very good picture here, sorry. I had, to, I had to splice two of them together, but uh, this was the inside of Purgatory. And here's our, here were our players. So the, the Dannys, Kim, the, Willet, the Willets, and over here where it was the Scots. We're going to play just, and, and so what we did over there is we were there for about an hour, hour and a half, probably an hour and a half, and we got some really great um, video from them. We haven't uh, put it up on the web yet because we're still in the process of of stitching it together and doing all of that. But when we do, it's just, a, it's like an hour, hour and a half of, of memories, kind of the same thing. And we'll, we'll, we kind of broke it down into some of the main categories because it seemed like, um, and Kim, and, Kim and, and the Willets here, you guys are here, you can uh, kind of tell us how that went too. But we, when we were listening to it, it was obvious that there was some categories like activities and schools and, and buildings and, um, Mission Viejo and some of the people involved. So it was, it was just fascinating for about an hour, hour and a half. We don't have it quite ready to go up on the web yet, but we will. And we will also, um, everybody was so generous to give us some of their uh, uh, newsletters and things like that. So we're in the process of scanning them and we'll put some of that on the web as well. So we've got a lot of great resources that day. And if anybody else on on our call today has any resources or you know old newsletters or whatever um, that you wouldn't mind us uh, making a scan of we would love that i think we got a lot of really great info from everybody so let's listen to um ashley here just for a minute they are our newest business sponsor and and then i'll tell you about the the history and, and why we just think this is such a neat area so here's ashley go I'm Ashley Breka, and we're at Purgatory Cellars in Highlands Ranch. We're right off of Broadway and Plaza near the AMC Theater. We have been here in this location for just over two years. We opened end of January 2019. We started in Parker. That's where we make most of our wines. We get the grapes from the western side of Colorado, so the Palisade area. We get them shipped over to our location in Parker, or we'll go pick them up and bring them over there for processing. So that's where we do the processing and the aging. We do age some wines here as well. We age mostly in oak, European oak berries. We do use stainless steel occasionally. Here on our location in Highlands Ranch, we age in bourbon barrels, which we get from Breckenridge Distillery up in Breckenridge, Colorado. And so we do a lot of uh, European style winemaking. You'll notice a European style in our tasting room. So very comfortable, very home-like. We have a great patio. We have uh, 
tall tables and couch seating indoors. Um, we have very historical ties, so our winemaker is from Croatia. We have some very interesting things in the winery here. We have an amphora, which is a clay pot. We also age some of our wines and ferment them in those. They are a old, very old winemaking technique. It used to be used in the country of Georgia. That's where we get our amphoras. And they used to be buried in the ground, so we keep the clay together. Uh, let it breathe, kind of like an oak barrel, keep the temperature very consistent, and you get a little bit more of an earthy characteristic from those wines. We do typically ferment white wines in there, so we age them on the skins and seeds, which is more of a red wine making technique, so a lot more flavor and characteristic from those wines that we get from the amphora, so very different. We've had um, a Chardonnay, we, had a, we got a silver medal um, at the Colorado Governor's Cup for our amphora aged Chardonnay. We have currently an amphora a Riesling, and then we also had a sparkling wine done in the amphora as well, and we have a uh, amphora Zinfandel that is a port style wine that we did in there, so very interesting. Um, one of our other historic ties, if you come into the winery, uh, main focal point when you wor first walk in to your left is our large wine press. And that came from the country of Croatia. It was made in 1888, so lots of historical things to kind of tie into the historical location that we're at. It's very interesting, um, very large, very heavy piece of piece of machinery, so glad we don't have to use that for winemaking anymore, but some very interesting focal pieces that we'd be happy to tell you about when you come in here. Um, to give you a little bit more of a background, um, the location in Parker has been open since April of 2015. Um, that is our main location for aging and making the wine production and things like that, and like I said, a little bit of aging here as well. Uh, my husband James and I opened this location in 2019, and kind of a, a spin-off, a second location. We actually have um, a location in Castle Rock as well, so opened this one shortly after that and just kind of wanted to expand. We love the community here in Highlands Ranch. It was a good fit for us. We are from Parker, but we were trying to look to expand to something that's more similar to Parker. We have great clientele out there. We wanted something that would um, kind of reach the same type of clientele and we love this area so very great location for us we love the people here we've been welcomed with open arms we um, actually got the award for best of the best in 2019 the first year we opened for um, the best wine bar in Highlands Ranch as well as the best place to meet new people so love it here we're super happy uh, love all the people that come in we have many regulars that come in uh, we have a wine club so we have two um, types of wine club memberships. We have Sinners and Saints because we are purgatory. Um, so two bottles or one bottle a month and you get discounts as well and we have lots of specials going on. So um, let's see, what else? Um, we have events usually when it's not uh, in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> lots of fun things going on. We've had charcuterie making events. We've had wine glass painting events. We have had live music before. We usually do some original music here um, when we're able to do that. And just great fun parties on the patio. Um, lots of great fun, great place, fun place to come hang out with your friends and do a happy hour. So please come in and see us. Call if you want to make a reservation. We'd be happy to save a table for you. Thank you. And, uh, and so that's the address, third drive and next um, <clears throat> DJ. So it's in, the, it's in the first convenience center. So we just thought it was so appropriate because this was one of the, this was the first convenience center that was built. And I'm sure you guys can tell us a little bit about it where the 7-Eleven is. And there was the library and it was, we see a video and there was an interiors uh, store. And so Purgatory is in the part that was the 7-Eleven. And if you haven't been in there, you should go in there. I go in there and I, and I keep looking around. It doesn't look at all like a, like a convenience store. Um, it looks like a really nice, sophisticated little, um, little winery, but, uh, but that's, that's where it is. Um, and you can see up here on the on the artist drawing um, the the original sketch of it and then right next to it is the uh, three-story building that is now called the Wells Fargo so that entire center is called the Wells Fargo Center. Any uh, any memories of the convenience center or or there you know in, in that area there? I'm a little curious uh, 
<laughs> somebody there can tell me how they got the name purgatory <laughs> you know she did say she did say how they got it and i don't remember anybody remember <laughs> we i i uh, had suggested that they get a picture of the clock um that's in the mansion you know the, the great big one that's in the great hall because the the wording on that clock was from dante's purgatory um, what, what, and what is it? Time passes, but man perceives it not uh, in the Tuscan dialect of, uh, I guess, of the time. But, but they, have, they haven't done that yet. It really is a nice place. And my understanding is that now, apparently, uh, right now, there is a, um, what is it? An urban egg in there. Like uh, on the picture here, you see where it says video. Over in that area is where the urban egg is, and that is going to become a brewery. So you're going to have a brewery and a wine shop in the same little center, and it's right across the street from that great big entertainment center and the, and the um, uh, AMC 24. So I think that's going to become the little entertainment uh, party spot of, of Highlands Ranch. Highlands Ranch Community Association used to be housed there as well, um, long time ago. The, the design remember? center was there. Was LK okay. um, and, and what the was it? 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven was initially for the convenience of a lot of the construction workers. And then kids who would ride bikes down to buy a big gulp. Um, Judy's Rasmatez Salon was there. The video store was there. Two gas pumps. Um, Post office. Oh, two gas pumps were there too. Yeah, two gas pumps. <laughs> <laughs> Where Wells Fargo has that little parking spot under a cover uh, at the parking lot that used to be two gas pumps. I was wondering where the gas pumps were. So where the cover is now for Wells Fargo was the gas pumps. Right. Probably um, the CEO of Wells Fargo when he comes to town parks there. Who knows? Okay. But, uh, and, and was that um, was that interior design? Is that was that for Mission Viejo then? Is that where you guys would go? Yes. That's where we went to pick out all of our rugging and flooring and tile and things like that. And was that there the whole time that Mission was uh, was in Highlands Ranch? No, because it, be, uh, it became the library after that. Well, so wasn't it? Or, yeah. Yeah. It, beca it became the Highlands Ranch Library, which had started out as two windowless small offices within the Northridge Elementary School library. And yeah. then... Very the library moved over to what had been the design center. Yeah. Very early on for design center and model homes, we went to Mission Viejo Aurora. Oh, oh, oh okay. So yeah. The model that we selected in the groves that we had to be prepared to announce when, when they did that drawing for the um, low interest to Mission Viejo Aurora and toured that model. Oh, okay. And then um, came back and lots to figure out which lot. And the design center was also in Aurora. That was very early, but we moved in in 81, mm -hmm. October. So, okay. I didn't know that, but that makes sense. Yep. All right. Good. Any other comments on that? DJ, next, please. So we're going to um, play just a, a very short video from, again, from that hour and a half portion. But the, uh, so it was just so interesting hearing everybody comment. So we're going to play a short little video here. It's been a great place to live, but the whole idea behind the ranch is a place to raise your family, your hometown. Right. And that's exactly the school system, the sports programs. They couldn't ask for a better place to raise a kid. To raise yeah, we used to, the 4th of July was always down at the park as well as the Easter Northridge Park. And 
the fire trucks would be out there wait for a fire. Cause Remember the, the year the fireworks went the up and they came yeah. down in the truck? Yeah. yeah. That was it. But that, we also we sat on the hillside there. Right. Yeah. I know I lost Jonathan that night. Oh, <laughs> we, uh, we started four Stony Point, but it used to have the wood shingles on the houses. That night, our, I'm out there with our cook and we had the pumper out in the side. In case and somebody. We, and that was, I think it was the fireworks in 1985 and behind Northridge here in Northridge Park. And we're out there trying to put out these fires, and we started five fires on Stony Point roofs. And the fire department had to come out, and the fire department said, no more. <laughs> we could never, then we had to move the fireworks. We moved them about three different times. But I always remember, I'm out there with Art Cook, and we got this pumper out there trying to put out the grass fires between the, you know, the park and Stony Point. And we thought the whole place was going to go up in flames that night. It was really bad. <laughs> My favorite was when we all lined up on County Line Road, and it was where um, the soccer fields are now, down there by Quebec and everything. And so all the cars lined up with their backs that way, and you turned your, mu they had music on the radio that went in tune, in sync with the fireworks. Oh, no, yeah. And so then the fireworks were directly south where there weren't any houses at the time. But it was like, it was so cool. Wow. It was so cool. See, I don't think I was there. No, I don't think was we it cold? Fort? There was one cold fort. We've we had a couple of cold forts over the years, but I don't remember. I do I mean, remember. It was cold, like 69 degrees. We put some really nice parties together. The 4th of July, we had little, we had horses there. We had everything. The, you know, Highlands Ranch days, we had our parties at the mansion, the, you know, the hoedown dances and all that stuff. But yeah, was a, the activities committee put that on for the first 10, 12 years. Yeah. And then we turned it over to the home. So it sounds like you guys in the old days had a lot of fun. Any comments on any of that or activities that you guys participated in? You know, there were there were so many great activities early on. The first, um, you know, holidays, uh, first Thanksgiving, you know, lots of fanfare for those of us who lived in the community, pancake breakfast with Joe Blake flipping pancakes um, down in in the area of Northridge Park. Um, you know, so just so many activities. And I was part of the activities committee in the early days um, and got to participate in a little bit of the planning for some of those events. The thing that I did with activities committee that I enjoyed so much and did for um, a few years was um, Santa letters. I answered the letters from Highlands Ranch kids that were dropped in Santa's mailbox and had, you know, such a good time tracking those letters year after year and, and responding to each one. And so great memories of, the fun things that we were able to do when the community was small enough that you could do those things. I still hang my Christmas ornaments that were delivered personally to my house every year. And I can't remember how many years that was, but I still have them. They would come and sometimes art would deliver them, sometimes else. And there was also Santa Claus parade down Broadway and they would serve cookies and hot chocolate. Um, and then we had the roundup, which was great and all kinds of fun things. Halloween party for the children at the mansion. Don't forget the and Halloween party. They also had the bus that um, every year we would take down to the Air Force Academy. And then my son also took the bus on Saturday mornings to ski. And so there was just so many different things. And they had a swim team, which was the first swim team. And most of the children had to participate in two or three events because there weren't that many children. And uh, it was great. It was a lot of fun. And Dennis was president of the swim team. Was he? <laughs> because what was the gal? She was an Olympian, but it was the year that they canceled the Olympics. And she was the coach. I can't, I can see her, but I can't remember her name. Yeah, but I, I had a teenage son 
uh, who liked to swim when we moved here. And, um, and so we managed to get, of course, Mission Viejo wanted us to get anything going that we could to build community. So, um, so they, they were agreeable once we had Northridge rec center That's built, right. uh, they were, they were happy to, to help get a, a swim team going. And it was, it was a good, uh, good project, good, good community activity. And speaking of the old days, I, re, uh, County line barbecue opened early eighties and we had the JCs and, um, and I approached County line barbecue about smoking turkey legs for the 4th of July. Right. Right. They, right. they thought that that'd be a nice thing for them to try. And so we were an experiment to do turkey legs and we had turkey legs on the 4th of July that, uh, that JC's offered to the community and, and they kept doing turkey legs and it was a good project. That was activity. probably 85, maybe might've been 84, that, uh, 85. Yeah, something. I think it, I think it was. And then they hit the apple and one, one year, the best apple yeah. pie. I think I won another year or maybe came in second, but, um, oh, it was, and the llamas were there and they the would greased pig. Contest. Oh, the grease pig. My son was, who, both our sons. yeah, both our Trump sons did that. Coffees. And I think he still has the pig, the grease pig and his family is now growing up in Highlands Ranch. So third generation. I want to give a shout out to Patty Dibel, who was, as far as I know, the first director of the Northridge Recreation Center. And we arrived in the spring of 84. And by that summer, she knew every single kid's name and nobody could get away with anything, you know, <laughs> inappropriate behavior because she knew them all. Yep. And that was a huge element of the hometown environment that Mission worked so hard to create. She was amazing. Her husband worked for Mission. Patty Dybul? Yes. Yeah. She, she, I think, I don't know if she still lives here, but she, she's lived here for, she did, lived here for years and ran the rec center for umpteen years. I hadn't heard of that name. Patty still lives in Highlands Ranch on uh, in a Stony Point. Right. On the, the same cul-de-sac that the models were on. Right. That's correct. That. Yeah. We need to we need to talk to her. You should. You uh, really should. She, she's talking to us, so she'll talk with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. And Sarah, don't you have some uh don't don't read all three pages, but maybe um, a, a couple of the little clips that. Oh, you... there's so much fun, Nancy. No, Beth not Nyhoff. all three pages. <laughs> um, Beth Nyhoff sent some information to me to to uh, share with you, and she said stories sharing the early days of the community activities at home. The weekend before Thanksgiving, 1981. Four of us from the Community Services Department of Mission Viejo Company, the developers of Highlands Ranch, visited the homes of the first 30 or so residents who currently lived in the community. We presented each family with a frozen turkey. Do you remember those turkeys? Yeah, do you remember that? We went in pairs to the front porches of those homes, dressed as a turkey and a pilgrim greeting the homeowners with a cheerful, happy Thanksgiving and welcome to Highlands Ranch. First Christmas. A week or two later, we kicked off the Christmas season with an event called Santa's Arrival, which involved Santa riding down Broadway on a fire engine and then sitting in Santa's workshop, which we built and placed in the bus turnout just north of North Ridge Rec Center. Santa was jolly and welcoming the children into the workshop and eager to hear their gift wishes. Two elves flanked Santa and handed out candy canes. The following year, we initiated a Christmas lights decorating contest, 
with prizes for first, second, and third places. We, we had a special committee serve as judges. It was amazing how elaborately many of the residents decorated their homes for this contest. Dancing and a live band. Um, Highlands Ranch Days. The next fall of 1982, we inaugurated our first Highlands Ranch Days, which consisted of various activities in the community. The highlight being a big barbecue on the front lawn of the mansion with all the residents invited. The night before we worked for hours loading a specially built cement barbecue pit with an entire cord of wood, which was doused with a gallon of lighter fluid and burned down to glowing coals. Lowered by poles with large nails on the end were 30 pound shoulder clods of beef purchased from a special meat locker in Franktown. These beef packages were rubbed liber literally with barbecue seasoning, carefully wrapped in aluminum foil and tied with wire so they could be lowered into the midst of the burning embers. Next, we would cover the pit with a corrugated steel and then shovel a large mound of sand over the top so none of the heat would escape. This was all accomplished at midnight in order to time the cooking to coincide with our noon barbecue the next morning. We used a bunch of flashlights to eliminate our important task. Uncovering all of this was another foil, um, excuse me, was another ritual in itself, particularly when we would unveil the foil and sample the beef, which if this process was all done to perfection, would yield meat that literally fell apart, allowing us to serve our residents with ease and speed. They loved it. Lots of events, and I'm almost through Nancy. <laughs> Easter egg hunts, 4th of July events and fireworks displays, craft shows and mansion tours, along with endless events at the rec center, all took place as the early years went by and new residents continued to move in. In spring of 1986, the Highlands Ranch Mansion was a site chosen for the Junior Symphony Guild's Designer Showcase fundraiser. This was a big event that ran for several weeks, eagerly attended by thousands of visitors. This entailed a dozen or so interior design firms, each decorating a room at the mansion including the ballroom, dining room, living room, kitchen, and all the upstairs bedrooms. There was a need for nighttime security. So my husband and I lived in the servants' quarters on the east end of the mansion above the kitchen. It would take nearly 30 minutes each morning to get hot water up to our rustic bathroom. Many a night, the alarms would somehow go off, prompting the Douglas County Sheriff's Department to arrive in the wee hours where we would sleepily greet them and confirm there was no emergency. July 4th, the annual July 4th celebration consisted of a kid's bike parade, gang booths, food stands, picnic in the park and more. The highlight was always a fireworks display shot off at dark in Northridge Park. And this is what they were referring to. One year in the late 80s, during an exceptionally dry season, sparks from the descending fireworks landed on a few of the houses in the Stony Point neighborhood, causing several fires. Thankfully, we had been proactive and had the fire department present and on the alert, so the damage was minimal. This made for quite the exciting finale to the fireworks display. Thank you, Sarah. Any, com any comments on any of the activities? Any additional comments? We were fortunate to get one of those turkeys. That was quite a surprise to open the door to that, but great, great effort. Um, 
on behalf of Mission Viejo to really kind of build that sense of community in those early days. I, I'm certainly hearing that uh, kind of as a theme throughout from just about all, all of you guys, all the other people that we've spoken to. I think Mission deserves a big, a big round of applause for all that they did to, to get the community started. Well, I think we, we, we've got more videos, but I think with that, we're going to end. If anybody has any final thoughts that they want to add or um, comments or anything, would love to hear it. Um, I'd just like to add, you know, we were there for 21 years, I guess, before moving back to Denver to take care of my mom. And um, just such great opportunities and, and, you know, such a great community. It was great to be there um, from the very beginning. Um, I was also fortunate to serve on the HRCA board and as president of the board for a brief period of time, and then was um, elected to the Board of County Commissioners for Highlands Ranch, representing Highlands Ranch. Um, once redistricting happened and Highlands Ranch um, was populated enough to have a commissioner on the board. So um, great memories, great opportunities. Sounds good, thank you. Anybody else, final thoughts? Well, thank you everybody for participating. We sure uh, appreciate it. I think we learned a lot. I hope you guys all, it, it stimulated some fond memories. Um, we will post this video. And then again, once we get our, uh, our other videos all together, uh, the, the early residents with, the, with Willits and, and, and uh, Kim and the Dannys and Scott. So we'll, we'll have all that posted. So we, we're learning a lot more. I do appreciate it. Again, if you have anything else you wanna add or any other um, handouts or anything that we could take scans of, we would appreciate that. Just, just send us an email. And I hope everybody on this uh, broadcast is on our email list because we'll obviously notify you whenever the videos are ready. If not, uh, we also post it on the front page of our website. So you can always just go there as well. All right, everybody, thank you so much. It's been a really interesting program and I sure appreciate everybody participating. That's what made it good as well as Highlands Ranch obviously is a, yeah, I think is a very special place. And like, as, as uh, one of you mentioned, you know, not just for now, but two and three generations already, our, our, our kids and grandkids and all are staying in Highlands Ranch. And for those of us who are seniors, um, and, uh, that's where so many seniors are coming moving to Highlands Ranch is because they want to be with the with the kids and the grandkids. So we've got a wide, wide variety of ages and uh, and people obviously love it. So thank you so much. We'll have we'll see you next month. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Thank you all. Nancy, it was a great program.